So usually when we think about aquatic fresh fragrances, some notes come into our mind automatically. Mandarin orange, bergamot, grapefruit, maybe ambroxan to give it a salty, sea breezy feel. We all know the typical fresh aquatic fragrances, Dolce & Gabbana's light blue, oh intense, Armani's Aqua di Gio are one of its many flankers for example. But tonight I'm going to introduce you guys to an aquatic fragrance that does things very differently. Kenzo Om EDP. You might want to stick around and check out this very unique aquatic fragrance. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Scent Review. So tonight, as promised in the introduction, I'm going to be introducing you guys to Kenzo's Ohm Eau de Parfum. This is the Quentin Biche version, the one from 2022. There is also a Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum that was released in 2016, maybe 2017. That's a totally different one. This is the 2022 Quentin Biche version. Now, full disclosure here, I am not very familiar with Kenzo fragrances. Before I discovered this one, the only Kenzo fragrance I ever knew was Tokyo. That that's a great one. Hard to get your hands on nowadays, but if you can, I highly recommend it. I do a lot of cologne trading. I do a lot of sales. I traded some of my old colognes a few weeks ago with somebody here in my city, and in return, Kenzo Eau de Parfum was included in the package. So I didn't necessarily ask for this one, but it was included in the deal. So I checked it out, did a little bit of research on it. So now that I've spent a few weeks with it, I'm going to give you guys my full review. Starting off with the box here, Kenzo Om Eau de Parfum. It's a long rectangular box here. As you can see, the bottom has ingredients, the batch code, and on the inside you can see, very minimalist. I like it, I like it. The bottle itself is meant to look like a piece of bamboo. Kenzo Takada, the founder of this company, originally from Japan. I kind of like the designs of the bottles, although I never had much experience, like I said, except for Tokyo by Kenzo before. But I mean, hey, it's something different. It's, it's not a design that you see every day. It's all right. The only problem with the cap is that it does not click into place very well. Never pick this one up by the cap. This is a 110 milliliter bottle here. By the way, I forgot to show you the bottom. Batch code number other information. Okay, I'm gonna get a few sprays out of the way here. I'm actually only one. I'm only gonna need one and I'm gonna explain why in a few minutes. Yeah, right off the bat, this is very different, very unique, very abstract. So the official note breakdown that we're given is in the top, C notes, in the mid, leather, and in the dry down, patchouli. That is an overly simplistic official note breakdown and I promise you there is a lot more going on in this fragrance. So what I actually detect is the following. In the top, I get watermelon and fig. In the mid, I get some suede and akigala wood. And in the dry down, I get some salt and some more akigala wood. So in the top here, I definitely get a big hit of creamy, maybe ever so slightly salty watermelon, which is gonna be coming from Calypsone, which is a trademarked aroma chemical, made to smell like creamy watermelon with a touch of salt. That's exactly what I get in the opening here. And that's mixed with some fig. Fig is a fruit that grows in the Mediterranean region. It's very sweet, it's warm, it's a little bit jammy, and mixed with the creamy watermelon that has a touch of salt in the top, does give it a very slight, very fruity, almost kind of aquatic feel. Normally in the openings of aquatic fragrances, like I said in the introduction, we get like bergamot or grapefruit, some sort of citrus note that's usually a little bit tangy and zesty. This one, it paints the picture of a marine landscape, but it just does it in a totally different way as opposed to a lot of other aquatic fragrances out there. Very interesting top here. And in the mid here, we get some suede and some akigala wood. The suede is going to give it an ever so slightly light, kind of creamy leather tinge, but it doesn't go all the way into deep, dark leather territory. It's more of a bright, kind of creamy leather accord. And it's not that strong, the suede here in the middle, at least to my nose. And that's mixed with some akigala wood. Now, what is akigala wood? Akigala wood is another trademarked aroma chemical that's created by the company Givaudan out of Switzerland. They synthesize different flavors and smells for the food industry and also the fragrance industry. Givaudan is actually the company that Quentin Biche works for, the nose behind this fragrance here. So what does akigala wood actually smell like? So akigala wood is derived from patchouli essential oil. So it has a sweet, spicy, 
sort of earthy, dark tone to it, but it's also mixed with woody notes. There's supposed to be oud mixed in with this as part of the official Akigala wood note breakdown, but I don't get any oud out of this. I do get some wood, but it's definitely not oud, and it's, yes, it's definitely mixed with a spicy, dark patchouli, although it doesn't go quite earthy to me. I have some patchouli essential oil in my room there, and to me that is more earthy, has a sort of dark chocolate kind of cacao tinge to it, along with a touch of spice. Now this one turns the spices up, turns the earthiness a little bit down, and it definitely has a little bit of woodiness to it. Very, very interesting in the mid here. And in the dry down, I get some salt mixed with some more Akigala wood. Now the salt in the dry down here does start to remind me of some more traditional aquatic fragrances. And Broxen, is not listed as an official note here, but I, I think I kind of do detect some ambroxin in the dry down here, right? So it's a little bit salty, kind of sea breezy, and mixed with some more of that spicy patchouli from the Akigala wood, although that is starting to decrease in prominence. So all in all here, very interesting fragrance. It does have some facets of an aquatic fragrance, but it does things way differently than what we're normally accustomed to, at least as far as designer aquatic fragrances go. This is super interesting here. It's like nothing I've ever smelled before. Now, like I said in the beginning, I'm not familiar with the rest of the Ohm line by Kenzo. I, I don't know anything about it except for this one fragrance here. Um, throughout my research, I have heard that a lot of people find this one similar to Ganymede, by Marc-Antoine Barrois. The nose behind that one also Quentin Biche. And I've also heard people compare this one to Bois Imperial by Essential Parfums. Again, Quentin Biche, the nose behind that one. And I'll be completely honest with you guys, I have not smelled either of those. I have no idea what they smell like. So as far as the claims of similarities between those two and this one, I really cannot speak to the accuracy of those claims. However, I will say this, it's the most unique aquatic fragrance I've ever smelled. And I'll be honest with you too, when I first got this, like I said, I got this as part of an exchange. It wasn't my decision, it was included in the package. I. I didn't know what to think about it. I didn't dislike it, but I thought it was very weird. It's very abstract, different. And I remember thinking it's very deep, it's spicy, it's kind of sweet. Did not strike me whatsoever as an aquatic fragrance until I spent a couple of days with it. And then it turned into a couple of weeks. And then I really started to notice like, huh, you know what? This does smell aquatic but it's just done in a completely different way from what I was used to before. Instead of citruses, watermelon and fig, and it does dry down with some ambroxan, which gives it some nice sea breezy, salty feeling to it. And mixed with that Akigala wood just makes for a very, very unique, yet still aquatic fragrance here. I can also say that this is not going to be for everybody. This is a, quite a divisive scent, I would think. I feel like it's going to be one of those love it or hate it ones. Or you could be like me, you could originally be indifferent to it, but then it could really start to grow on you the more time you spend with it. I have to say now, for the three weeks that I've had this one, I appreciate it more and more every day. It's slowly becoming one of my favorite aquatic scents, mostly because of its uniqueness. And it does smell very good. Once I've learned to differentiate each individual note, I really appreciate this one. This is a work of art, very unique, very abstract, probably not what you're used to. It's a very oriental, very tropical type of aquatic scent. So for example, if we think of some well-known aquatic freshies out there, like Light Blue Intense by Dolce & Gabbana, that might remind you of being on a beach, maybe a rocky cliff in coastal Italy. Maybe there's a lemon tree growing nearby. That's kind of the image that comes into my mind when I smell the typical aquatic freshy. So if light blue O intense by Dolce & Gabbana is the Mediterranean, this one here is more like Southeast Asia, maybe Bali, maybe even the Philippines. It's more tropical, there's a lot more type of exotic foliage around. That's kind of the image that I get when I smell this one. So it's, it's aquatic, just done in a very different way, like I keep saying, yet yeah, very unique. I really truly love this one, but I don't think everybody is going to like it. And that leads me to the next part, which is the performance. This is a beast. The performance on this one is incredible. Longevity, I get easily two hours past an arm's length projection. The total longevity on my skin is 10 hours. Sometimes even after a shower, I can still smell this on my skin. Very, very strong. It is absolutely a room filler, and it's not what I would call a typical mass appealing aquatic fragrance either. This is more of an aquatic fragrance done in a very artistic way. But hey, if that sounds like it's up your alley, by all means pick this one up, because this one can be had, the 110 milliliter bottle can be had for $55 
dollars US on fragrance net. Gonna leave that link down below here. So I think for that price, this is absolutely an incredible buy. It's one of the most unique fragrances I've ever smelled. It's definitely one of the most unique in my collection. As far as versatility, ooh, this is not very versatile. I think this is maybe even an outdoor only scent. I think if you wore this to the office, it would kind of choke some people out, to be honest. This is one you wear if you want to get noticed. If you're going to an outdoor event, maybe a concert, wear this one, people are gonna notice you. Very few sprays, I would say three maximum sprays in any type of weather. I do wear this in the hot summer because I think it just works. To my nose, it's definitely inspired by the tropics. Now having said all that, it's heavy, it's got some sweetness, it's got some spice, but I still think it really does work in the hot weather. I also think that this can be worn year round. You can definitely get away with wearing this in the cold weather. I haven't actually gotten a chance to wear it in the cold weather yet, but I have a feeling it would do really well. So maybe I'll post a follow-up review in six or so months from now when it's winter time where I am. Um, but until then, I'm gonna keep enjoying this one. And I highly recommend it to you guys if you're looking for something different. If you want an oriental, tropical inspired aquatic, check this one out. And uh, if you're looking for good performance, look no further than this. This is gonna last you all day long and then some. I'm very happy with this. I'm glad that I sort of stumbled upon it by chance. I probably never would have discovered it otherwise. But in closing, I would recommend that if you are intending to buy this, please, please sample it at a store first if you can. I think you can also find some samples of this on the internet. But like I said, it could be very divisive. I have a feeling it's gonna be a love it or hate it scent for a lot of people. So test it out if you have the chance before you buy it. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed my review of Kenzo Om Eau de Parfum. Until next time, keep it real.